Hello everyone, Christian here. I'm recording this uh, video not on a fancy camera today but just on my phone and I want to discuss a quite controversial subject in violin playing, violin technique, and that is playing without a shoulder rest. And um, I know uh, there's a lot of that can be said about this and to avoid fights on this video uh, on Facebook or on YouTube or wherever it appears, I want to stress before I start talking about playing without a shoulder rest that all the opinions in this video are purely mine and um, everything I s every time I make a statement about the benefits of playing without a shoulder rest, it is my experience and it might not be the truth. It's just the way I view it. But I'm making this video because um, almost every concert I give, uh, if there's a lot of people there, then invariably one or more violinists will approach me after the concert to ask me how I'm able to play a full concert without a shoulder rest. And because before they view the concert, before they see me play, they they kind of assume, oh, it's, it's a jazz violin, so probably you don't need a, a shoulder rest for that because, well, uh, no vibrato or everything is in first position. But then they see me play and I use a lot of vibrato and I play very high in my solos. And, and that might seem puzzling to many violin players because they feel that to get a good vibrato and to... Uh, make shifting easier, you need a shoulder rest to take the stress off of your arm. Uh, because if you have a shoulder rest, you kind of hold the violin between your chin and your shoulder or your collarbone, and then the violin is, is stationary. Um, I can do that because uh, when I do that, the violin drops, and then your arm is free to play. And that, that makes sense. So, how then is it possible to feel comfortable without a shoulder rest and still? have a free arm. So uh, I want to make to keep this video short so I, I thought about what I'm gonna say. So there's a lot that can be said about it and in fact if you want to know more about it I'm gonna do a workshop completely on this and also my right hand technique which is another controversial subject but for another video um, and I will discuss this technique in detail, give you exercises and answer questions. But for now I want to discuss what I think is the most important to play, the most important reason to play without a shoulder rest, then the most important artistic reason to play without a shoulder rest for me, and then three technical issues you might encounter when you give this a try, or when you want to switch to play without a shoulder rest. So the first, the main reason, the most important reason to play without a shoulder rest is because it avoids injuries and pain. Now this might seem uh, strange because you think, well, without a shoulder rest, you probably have to really clench down more with your chin to, to be able to hold the violin. But just as I said, you're not doing it. I'm holding the violin up with my arm completely. And my chin is just there to keep the violin from making too much of this kind of motion when I'm vibrating. But if I'm not vibrating, I can have my chin off the violin. It doesn't really matter because I'm holding it up with my arm and the violin is resting on my collarbone. So because I'm not clenching here, and you see when I do that, then, my, then it, I need to, this, this muscle here will start working. And when you do this for a long time, clenching the violin like this, even with the shoulder rest, you still have to clench to keep the violin there. A lot of people will have pain here or in their jaw, that happens a lot, or in their shoulders. And especially when you play a long time, and, you know, we all know that if you want to play violin well, you need to have a lot of hours, practice hours, and that can be quite uncomfortable, especially when you get a little older. Now, so the most important reason is that if you don't play with the shoulder rest, you will avoid these injuries, just because you're holding up the violin with your arm. And, I mean, your arm, you can hold up an object all day with your arm without feeling any discomfort. I mean, your arm is... It's kind of there to hold things. So that is, I think, the most important reason. And um, because of, of this uh, comfort, violin 
playing the violin actually becomes really comfortable. I'd say really easy even. Um, one of the major benefits of playing like this is that it is very relaxing. Your body is very relaxed. I don't have to do anything with my body. My arm does all the work here. And, and because it is so relaxed and so natural, feeling the, playing the violin feels very natural, very, very comfortable. I never have to warm up. Um, and I never have any trouble playing on another violin. It, it all feels very comfortable because my arm is able to move the violin in any position that I want to. And this can vary for different uh, passages of music or different instruments. I can just move the violin to where it feels comfortable for me. This can even change within a, a piece of music, within a, a, a song if you're playing jazz. And I can move it up and down, left and right. Well, I, I kind of try to keep it inside my body so that everything is in front of me. That feels very uh, natural as well. I mean, if you have a shoulder rest, a lot of people play like this, you know, and the violin might even be like on an angle like this. This is just very uncomfortable also for your, for your right shoulder. And the violin in front of you, resting on your collarbone, that's important. It feels just very natural. So I always compare it to walking. Like if you, most people, they don't have problems with their legs or like muscle aches. Like walking doesn't take any effort, right? You can just stand up and walk to the, to the store. I've never heard anyone say, well, I need to warm up first. I'm not talking about running like a marathon. I'm just talking about walking to the store. I need to warm up and uh, I'm, I'm rusty. No, you just stand up and walk because it's so easy. And the same is for, for playing without a shoulder rest for me. I just open my case, pick up the violin, how great is that? You don't have to put anything on it and adjust the height and just put it there and immediately play and it feels the same every time. Even if I haven't played for like two months, uh, which happens sometimes when I have to play a lot of guitar and I don't have time to practice the violin every day and sometimes I don't play for a week and I have a gig and it immediately feels natural, comfortable. I immediately have the, the, the sound I want and that sound I can pretty much get on every violin. There, Of course there's uh, little uh, variations because of the quality of the instruments, but it is always my sound. It sounds the same, it's very consistent, the vibrato is consistent, everything is consistent. So that is, I think, the most important reason to play without a shoulder rest. Now, uh, the most important artistic reason for me, and you could say it's a kind of a philosophy, it is that because I have kind of more contact with the instrument. It's really mine, you know, I can move it, I can put it in any position I want. And um, it is easy for me to get kind of a personal sound. And this, it, it goes deeper than the, the general sound. It, it's even about the sound on certain notes. For instance, when I play a note in third position, let's say I play this E, right? I like to hold the violin here with my, my hand to get this kind of kind of finger vibrato. But you cannot do this in first position, of course, but here you can. And I can get a kind of a different sound on that E. And I don't have to do it, I can also play like this. Or I can do this. These kind of things, I can drop the violin down, I can put it up. It's very easy for me to like kind of color the sounds by adjusting the position of my violin and my hand and my arm. There's no one way to approach the violin. And that is something most people try to do with their shoulder rest, right? You have the violin stationary and you kind of approach the violin from the same angle everywhere you play. Well, if you go very high, you have to kind of do this and stuff. I don't have to do that because if I go high, I can just drop the violin down or up, depends on what feels comfortable. And, you know, it just feels very natural. I don't think that much in positions even anymore. It's just, I know where the notes are and I just go there and I adjust my violin and my hand position to what feels comfortable. It's very natural. You know, it, it comes really easy. So um, that approach to playing violin, that, that personal approach, the, the ability to create colors by being able to move the instrument is the most artistic reason for me to do it. I also noticed uh, vast improvements in the sound. I played for a long time with all, without shoulder rest and I played for a long time with and the thing that happened almost instantly 
was that the sound improved. And I think that's just because I was more relaxed when playing the violin without soul rest. Everything became really, really easy. And we all want that because the violin, playing the violin can be really hard. Also, I started playing more in tune, same region. I was more relaxed and I started to feel the notes better on the neck. I wasn't trying to like have a certain way of of, of approaching the whole violin. I, I have now have a certain way of approaching different notes. For instance, when I play this B flat here, I kind of like put my hand there and then it's just easier to play this B flat really low if I want to. But this kind of thing you would probably never do with a, with a shoulder rest. It's just not part of the, the teaching method of the philosophy. Then you have to have the guy in the same posture all the time. And I, I try to avoid it. I, I go for the sound and yeah, I go for the sound and of course the tuning. So now you have the most important reasons to play without a shoulder rest for me. First, no injuries, no pain. I can play 12 hours and I feel nothing. It feels exactly the same from the first second I play the uh, pick up the violin until the last second. I, I might become fatigued, tired here, but not not in the in the feeling of holding the instrument. It feels very natural. Okay, now let's go into some technical issues. Uh, first, posture. Let's go into posture. Then let's go into um, shifting, and then vibrato. Uh, the posture, I already said a little bit, for me it's very easy, I, I rest the violin on my collarbone, so it's in front of my body. Well, I, I can move it here, but I, I feel this very, to be very uncomfortable to have the violin right there, which is what happens a lot when you play with a shoulder rest. You don't have to do it, by the way, with the shoulder rest, you can still put it on your collarbone, but without the shoulder rest you kind of have to do this. And now the violin is in front of me and everything is very, you can see, it's very comfortable, very natural, so that's the first I can say about posture. Then the second thing is that it doesn't really matter how high the violin is. That, that is important. You could have it straight like this. You can have it high up there. It kind of stays the same. And you can change that in the middle of a tune. You know, when you sit down, maybe you have, have kind of another posture. Maybe when you stand up, maybe when you stand one leg hopping around, you have another posture. It doesn't really matter as long as it feels very comfortable. So, uh, my arm, my elbow here, so I've noticed that the further my elbow is on the violin, the easier it is to get a nice vibrato. So, by moving the violin, by being able to move it, I can kind of change the position of my violin to facilitate this. Right? Another reason to do it. And, and when I don't have to do a vibrato, I can change it again. So, but the main thing is about postures, there is no one posture. You just put the violin on your collarbone and then you hold the violin with the arm. So let's talk about holding the violin with the arm. How can it be that holding the violin with the arm doesn't inhibit playing the violin, you know, with shifting and your fingers? Um, that is because the, the thing that holds up the violin, the muscles that hold the violin are not the same, it's not, are not the same muscles that actually press the string uh, or shift. I mean, those are the same muscles, but you now the violin is, is being held up by this arch here. You know, and the arch is really a strong structure. A lot of people that uh, play piano have also have this kind of arch approach because the arch is strong and it facilitates uh, making a good sound on the piano. Well, it facilitates holding the violin. This arch is so strong, it, you don't get tired at all in your arm. So, it's just easy to hold the violin with your arm, right? You have to kind of have a, of course the neck has to rest inside this V, right? And it's easier to do it with your thumb. You will notice that if you play like this, then it becomes more difficult to play the violin um, without the shoulder rest, just because um, it's easier if you can grab the violin. So if you play like this, then you have to make another adjustment. Just, just put your thumb uh, next to your fingers, so you can see the thumb. And now I'm just holding the violin, I'm grabbing it here, not with a tight grip, just very loosely, and uh, I'm holding the violin up with my arm. Quite easy. Okay, so let's talk about, um, I feel there's something else I have to say here. 
Oh, I get, maybe I remember it. Let, let's get into shifting. So the thing with shifting without a shoulder rest is that shifting up is easy. You know, it's just it's the same. Just you move your lower arm up. That's also a, a tip, by the way. Never try to shift with your fingers, right? Never try to. If you have to go from a B to an F sharp, never try to shift, focusing on your fingers. No, sh focus on your lower arm and just train that lower arm to remember the position of the third position, and then you can just put the finger down. So if you want to practice this and you hit this F sharp out of tune, let's say, then don't try to, don't adjust your finger. No, just do that shift like 10 times. Remember, train your arm, lower arm to remember the position of the third position. And that's easy to train. This, this, this movement is quite easy to train. It's easier than you think. But shifting back is where the issues start because if you shift back without thinking about it, what will happen is you will pull the violin from under your chin, right? Because you're not pressing down, so you pull the violin. So to avoid this, you have to first move your thumb. But so I go, I go from this D, third position, to B. I have to first move my thumb and then move my lower arm to play the B. Now this goes so fast. Go so fast after a while that you won't even notice it. But in the beginning, maybe you have to be conscious about that. But but it is not difficult. It's actually quite easy. Now the the only place on the violin where this becomes really difficult is if you have are high on the G string. But but how often are you high on the G string? Maybe you play those Paganini variations and and the Chardas, of course. Now this is when you, let's say you play the Chardas. <laughs> You're on the B flat, and you have to go to the low B flat. Now it's easy to pull the violin uh, out of from under your chin. It's, it's now more difficult to move your thumb first because your hand is so high on the violin. So the solution for that is that you have to press down momentarily. But that's just only for that one shift. Let me let go. So maybe this will happen to you once every two weeks. I mean, if you have to press down constantly like that, of course, you will injure yourself. But only for that one shift in the charters. Don't play the Moses variation. Don't play those variations by Paganini. I think I think they call the Moses variations. I'm not sure. Don't play those. <laughs> if you have to play those, maybe you can use the solo rest. But otherwise, all the other shifts are not hard. I, in fact, I think it's easier to uh, shift without a solo rest just because you can adapt so many things in your posture to make this easier. And it depends on your on your body type, depends on, on your instrument, depends on many, many things. But you can f just do what feels natural. There is no right or wrong. As, uh, when the sound is good and you feel relaxed, that's the most important thing. You feel relaxed and you're not locking any joints, you're doing it correctly. Okay, last issue, last issue is vibrato. Um, People say, well, without a short rest, the violin shakes too much. And well, what, what is too much? What is shaking too much? I'd say it shakes too much if it, if it affects the sound. But for, when I play vibrato, my violin shakes, you know, you can see it moving. I'm not bothered by it. In fact, Maybe it helps the sound, but here's the thing. If you have a very heavy arm for bound, and I'm talking about this kind of, oh, I'm not sure which school it is, but there is this kind of school that use a very heavy arm for bound. They, they work on locking the wrist and by moving the arm vigorously like this. Well, if I do that, I have to press down actually, because if I don't press down, the final will indeed shake too much. So don't do that. Use other ways to vibrate. Use more of your wrist. Use more of kind of focus on rolling your finger because that's what vibrato is, right? You're rolling the finger from a from a bent position to to a flat position. Just focus on more of the wrist. It's a slight adjustment, but but again, if you are in different uh, place on the violin, you can change the the way you do it. For instance, in the third position, again, I talked about it. 
I had my hand here, and it's, this is easy to do. So, um, of course, vibrato is difficult. Don't get me wrong, it takes a long time to get a nice vibrato. Not only the technique, but also to get the sound in your ears, uh, uh, to get the right sound in your ears first so that you know what you have to produce there. So listen to a lot of great uh, violin players with great vibrato. But don't, the only thing I have to say about this, don't focus on this very heavy arm vibrato. <laughs> that is also a reason, a uh, common reason for discomfort and injury. So it's not good anyway. Uh, the vibrato has to be relaxed, very relaxed and very natural. And the, the violin shaking doesn't matter. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything I left out? I feel like there's one little thing I have to say about it, but I can't think of it now. Anyway, um, oh yeah, that, that I know what it is. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a workshop, I already said it. I'm going to do a workshop on this uh, at Jangle Fest Northwest. That is, uh, I think it's 21st of September to 24th. I will do six workshops. I think four will be guitar and two violin. One will be about um, jazz violin, the, the, my system for improvising violin. I have a very specific system for this. Uh, and one will be only about violin technique. And it will be about playing without shoulder rest for the, like, the left hand. And it will be about my kind of unorthodox way of holding the violin bow. Uh, I think they call, it, they, they call it the Russian bow grip, which is another controversial subject. But I have very specific reasons for that too, and I'll make another video about that too. But if you want to know more about this way of playing, because there's much more I can say about playing without shoulder rest, um, exercises, uh, specific uh, passages of music, how to play those, um, getting this personal sound, um, playing with the vibrato speed, uh, slides, how to create uh, like stylish slides, like, like you know. Uh, and there's many more slides, by the way. I'll talk about that in a workshop uh, in Whit on Whitby Island near Seattle. Uh, so, until next time, see you later.